he's got control, so until he Okay, I think I got it now. Can you see my oh. screen? Yes. Okay. Okay, why don't we wait till everybody joins in and then we'll we'll begin. Okay. I don't know if Wendy's on the telecom bridge yet or not. Oh, Wendy and Jennifer are all in here together. Oh, you're all in together. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Benny and Zach. And it looks like Wendy. It's Ben. And, and Cynthia and... Oh, and the Jennifer Hudson. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering about that. You must get asked that all the time. Yes, I do. Can you sing? No, not at all. <laughs> act, like, act like she can. <laughs> she, she can sing. I've heard her. <laughs> All right, so I recorded this meeting uh, so that if anybody has questions, you can play it back. I'll put it on YouTube and you can play it back. Okay. Okay, so I might as well jump into it then. Uh, so last week uh, we were contacted by Cynthia and we went out on the web and basically downloaded a parts list and some pictures from your uh, website to show you what your data would look like in Inventory Pro. It's probably not Certainly not the final import, but it'll give you an idea of what we do. Uh, so uh, this is your login page. What I also did was uh, on that uh, email, there were a number of people uh, referenced. So I created login accounts for you. So this, this site is available to you if you want to log in and test functionality. Okay, so I basically set it up with your email addresses, and your password is all 1234. All right, so okay. email and one two three four gets you into the system, and this is the URL. So it's dev.cissltd.com test ASC. Okay, so uh, when you log in, you're going to present it with the item master list. Okay, this is kind of like the default dashboard for our system. So you know, this is where your parts catalog can be viewed. Uh, what I did with your data was I created two virtual warehouses initially, and then we created three for the vans. But basically, we have the ASC distribution center, which is all your parts. And then I created a used equipment uh, warehouse. And this is where I stuck all the used equipment. And basically, this is the inventory with the images that I grabbed. So. Uh, we can actually have a customer facing portal for you if you want where you know you could publish our quick order page that looks at the used equipment inventory and people can see what you have available for sale if you wanted to it's uh it's at your discretion but all warehouses as an admin normally our admins are given access to all the warehouses so they can go in and they can manipulate inventory wherever it lives uh, usually, employees of the company are restricted to uh, particular warehouses. That way, they can't jump into other other zones in the system where you may not want them to be. That's all done again uh, through the system menu and system users accounts. So, if I bring up my account, we'll see right here. You know, we have a default home page and then a warehouse, and it's not selected. When it's not selected you can jump anywhere in the system. And, and you can do that simply by going back into the item master list or on any of our pages and just selecting the warehouse you want to work in. So for this session, as long as I'm working, I'm working in the ASC DC warehouse. So a lot of the information you find on our uh, dashboard is basically, you know, it's item information. So, you know, we have uh, a barcode label, so we can label anything you need labeled and basically generate barcodes for you for scanning purposes. 
This is going to bring up an item label, I hope. So let's see. So this is a standard two by one item label. It has the, the name of the part, uh, the description, and the, the SKU or item ID, and it's barcoded. Uh, this little link right here will take you into our activity uh, assignment. So you can create or make parts available in different warehouses. So right now, all of this parts catalog is available in the distribution center as well as the vans. So what that means is when you, when you go into a van to stock it, you'll have access to this part list, but you won't have access to the used equipment. Uh, we have a category. Uh, items can be categorized, and I, again, took this from your web page. Uh, the description, whether or not there's images, uh, history. Let's see if we have history on this guy. History, everything that's done in the system is tracked. So when you receive a good, goods in, or you issue them out, or you move them, there's going to be a transaction record captured at that point in time. So this is basically the initial import, and uh, again, this is you know this this is the audit trail for that. And this tells you when it was received, the date it was received, how many units, where it was received into, you know, the dock within the ASCDC, who received it in. Uh, we have reference fields, adjustment reasons, goes on and on and on. So basically, it's the audit trail of that particular part. Uh, this, these columns will show you what's available and what's in stock. So if you wanted to, you could actually say you needed to split off uh, a unit from this one. Well, I've already done it. But basically, if I needed to split off another one, let's say I wanted to take two of these items and move them to a truck, I could basically take two and split it off. Okay, so what it does is it just makes a, you know, it makes a mirror copy of the, the part, but it, it uh, creates a new entry in the inventory for the two units that I specified that I needed for the part. So if I want to move this stock into a truck, what I can do is I can go into inventory again and go into locate and move, and I can place units in transit. Now, this function is for shipping between virtual warehouses. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, I'm going to place units in transit to a, to a van. So I select the warehouse that I'm taking the units out of, and I click on this button. What button was that? That was uh, place units in transit. We're making okay, so the, <laughs> We're also recording. So you'll have that to reference. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these lines, and I'm going to say I want to push this to van 2. OK, so I just mark it. It's the fourth one down, right? And I ship it. OK, so what that does is it puts it in transit. It's kind of in a hold uh, condition. So it can't be committed to an order. It can't be issued out of the system. It's basically marked at hold. It's in transit to the van. You can't do anything with it. So in order to receive it into the van, you basically go back to the same place. You do a locate and move again. You change your warehouse to the van, OK? And if I say receive units in transit, you'll see that this is waiting to be received into your, to your van location. OK, so this is, this is the warehouse, or the, the virtual virtual location you're moving stock to, each warehouse also has within it locations, OK? So that's one of the requirements, requirements of the system. So what I did was within the van 02, I just specified a default location of truck. So what we're going to do is we're just going to move this or accept this and put it into the truck. So I'm going to mark it, and I'm going to receive it. So now if we look at inventory again through the locate and move screen, and I say, let me see what I have in van 2. OK, so this is now in the van. So it's been moved from your central distribution center into the van. If we go back into our item master list, one of the things you can do is set up restocking points for the, the vans. 
We have reorder levels here. So if you want to, you can specify, oh, I should have built that differently. You can specify the reorder points for the vans. So you can say, you know, for this part, I want to keep at all times five, five units in the van. And once it falls below that, we have utilities in the system that you can run to create stock in transits for restocking. It will actually look at those reorder levels And it will suggest, you know, uh, replenishment for you, okay? So it'll actually set up those in transits automatically based upon your reorder points. Uh, again, that's pretty much it. Now, the edit button, wherever you see this pencil icon, it takes you into the attributes. So uh, we have a number of fields here that can be used with parts as well as suppliers, vendors, uh, cat, customers, whatever, warehouses. They, they all pretty much work the same way. Wherever you see that pencil, it drills you into it. So we have uh, assemblies and serializing. So if you actually assembled finished goods for your uh, uh, laundry locations, you could create an assembly with a bill of materials and actually build those pieces that go into it. It's probably not, probably not germane to your your uh, setup, but it's available to you. Whether or not uh, parts require serial numbers, whether whether or not they're unique for every part in the system. Uh, we have pricing and cost. Okay, so we have cost and default prices as well as case prices and different pricing levels. And we have certifications and inspections. If you need to, you know, uh, inspect the washers every, you know, six months or whatever, you can set up. Uh, a schedule for inspections based upon you know intervals. Uh, what is it? Yeah, whether you're going to uh, certify them by the month, the quarter, the week, or the year. So that's available to you. Any questions yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The way it works is the men write up on maintenance sheets what parts they need from the warehouse. Okay, so parts department will write it up on a stock reduction sheet of what of what they taken out of the central warehouse and what they're distributing out to the van. Okay. And it may be forty parts on that sheet. So Am I going to have to move, 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 move every time I want to move something? Or is there a way that I can just type in each part and individually of where I want it to go? and Like have a whole list to go at one time? See, they're all different vans. Like this part might go to this van, this part might go to that van, this might, van might be charged to a store. This van may, I mean, this part may be, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um. Because like right now it's all on one screen. Like I type in central and it says to transfer, and I say central transfer to O2 to van O2, and it's done. And then I can enter the next part and hit transfer to van 55, and the next one I can type in. But you were showing you got to go over and move and move and move and move. Am I going to have to do that every time? Well, again, if you. If I mean, is it a standard stocking pattern you follow where, you know, you just okay. may, it's not. So it's based upon usage? Yes. Okay. Yeah, when and so part off of their van, they let parts know, and then they reissue that part back over to that van. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then sometimes the parts department will issue out parts charging them directly to the store instead of sending them over to the van. Right. And then the men turn in maintenance sheets that I have to punch off of, of the part number and I have to pull it off of their van and, and put it to the store. Right. Well, you can right. do multiple, you can do batch moves in the locate and move screen. When you do a transit, it creates a transit slip number. So you can reference the different individual parts that you want to go on that transit slip. 
So you can do it. You don't have to do one at a time. You have, you're going to have to pick them no matter what you do. So how do you pick them today? We punch them in the computer. I mean, in that part number. That part number. Yeah. So I mean, basically, it works the same way. You do have the ability to batch them in. The okay. stores you can. The stores you. Pardon me. Can you put like the part number in that search box? Yeah. So if you go inventory and you know again you want to stock the van, let's go back to locate and move. All right, just to, to give you a, to a scenario. All right, just say part number one zero zero one seven three. It needs to go to van two. So where would I? Do we have that part number in the? Do, is yeah. that part of the part number I brought in? Yeah. What's yeah. the part number again? One zero one. One zero zero. One zero zero. One seven three. One seven three. I think you're in the wrong uh, warehouse, Ben. Oh, oh I am. Right. I'm in the van. Yeah. Let me uh, choose the distribution center. Did we bring that part number in, or? I don't know. Yeah. That's what I'll go back to the item master and look. I don't have stock anymore. Please stop. That's there, but there's nothing in stock. So we didn't have any stocking quantities for this particular part. So let me show you how you receive stock in, and then we'll do it, all right? Okay. So, so if I need to receive stock in, you go to the receive stock, you type in the item number, how many units you're bringing in. We'll bring in 1,000. The location you want to bring it into, I'm just going to bring it into the storeroom. And you have these fields. Now, a reference field, if, if you don't put something in, it will automatically be assigned by the system. And it's used for reporting. It's just an available filter for you to pull against for reporting. Remark columns. I'm going to save this because I wanted to show you that uh, these views can also change. OK, so we have a scanner quick receive that you can use where you just go boom, boom, boom. You know, You can take a gun, barcode, and just work your way down the page. Uh, you know, we have the default views, serial numbers, references, expiration dates, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's very, you know, we can fit almost any scenario that needs to be fit out there. We don't target any one particular market. So, you know, we have a lot of different views of the receiving and the issuing grid. But so all I'm going to do is receive these in. Now, if I go back into inventory, and I go back to my locate move screen, and I say, OK, I want to place units in transit, and I search for that number, OK, it shows you that you have 1,000 units here. OK, so if I want to take 100 out, I'm going to split 100 off. And then I'm just going to choose the van and the transit slip is create new. OK, so if I take these 100 and ship it, it's now on the transit slip waiting to go to the van. So what I can do is if I go back into inventory and I want to select another part, if I know I have it and it's in stock, you know, once you get familiar with the data, you can save a lot of steps. But so if I want to take 900 of these guys, And go back into that's one zero zero. Oh, that's the one I just moved. <laughs> Sorry. So let's take uh, one two zero zero two zero three nine. One two zero zero two zero three nine. And I want to move him on that same transit slip. I'll go into inventory, locate, move, place units in transit. I'll do a search on one two zero zero two zero three nine. I'll mark them, and I'll select the transit slip again. Now, if you bring up the transit slip. OK, 
Okay, you'll see we have the two items in transit to that pan. So it kind of works as a packing slip as well for you. So as long as that as long as that has that transit slip hasn't been received into the van, it's available for you to add items to, and you just do them by searching in that locate and move screen. Similar to the way you're doing it today. Now, if you're actually shipping to the, the laundromats, what right. I recommend you do is set them up as customers and use our shipping order module. Okay, that will actually issue stock out directly into, you know, I mean, it will ship to the laundromat. Now, I guess what I need to know, do you need to track stock at the laundromat as No, well? we charge them out to the stores by the account. Okay, so basically what, the difference between putting something in transit and shipping it is when you ship it, it actually consumes the product. So it's gone, it's out of your inventory at that point in time. And you can, you know, we do have invoicing tied to the shipping order, so you can actually invoice out of our shipping order module. So it basically sets your laundromats up as a customer. You basically create an order for them, and then you issue stock out. So uh, let's see, to demonstrate this, I mean, if I created a customer, for lack of a better term. Okay, and save it. Okay, I now have a customer record for Laundry One. And if I want to, what I can do is I can go into orders and create a shipping order. Okay, it says I'm going to ship it out of the warehouse. So inventory is going to be relieved out of ASCDC. I'm going to ship to Laundry One. I'm going to build Laundry One. Okay, so what I've done is created a header for the shipping order, and then we're going to commit line items to it. So I'm going to look up stock. I'm going to say I want one of these. I want this one. I'll just choose three, random. Save it. I'm going to order one, one, one. Okay, it shows you how much I have in stock and what's been ordered, okay, and the pricing. So when that's when you're happy with the order, all you do is start an issue. And what this does is it takes us into our uh, issue module. You choose the location you're shipping from, or you can do a load all, which will automatically pull it out of ASCDC. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is finish the issue. So now the stock's gone. Okay, it's out of ASDC. It's been shipped to the laundromat. There's a packing slip that you can print. Okay, and we can customize these for you. We do it all the time. Uh, if I go back and look at the audit trail, out of ASCDC, this shows you everything that's been done today, okay, in that warehouse. So it shows the shipping order. It shows the transits. It shows the receive and the issue. Everything's there. If you go into orders now and you look at completed orders, this is the shipping order we just completed. This is the invoice for it. We don't need invoice. Okay, let's say we have shipped this to laundry one. We need for it, the pricing to be charged to that store to go into our general ledger. Will it do that? Yeah, that's. I'm going to turn this over to Zach now. We do have a Sage interface. It's not connected with your data, but we can demo it for you. You can see it. Basically, what it does is it pulls purchase orders and shipping orders into Sage. Everything is. And everything's got it's to go. Not, yeah. Everything has to go in GL. Not just the transits, everything has to go to GL. See, so like right now, anything that we do in inventory, account payable, or anything, at the end of the month, we interface it into the GL. Okay. And it's charged to the account number that we put in when we enter it in each of those modules. Okay. 
Well, that's something we could add into the uh, the system. Currently, it it primarily focuses on the uh, the shipping order transactions and the purchase order transactions. It will focus on those transactions, and whenever you process an order, uh, that will apply it to the appropriate ledger accounts that you set up. Um, we also have it where you can actually set up certain inventory items to always post against certain ledger accounts. Uh, so, right. like for example, consumables always go against a certain account. You know. Um, other types of parts, you know, you can specify a, a very specific uh, mapping there. Um, we don't have it so that you know every single in transit would uh, do that. Um, however, that is a customization we could uh, look at making for you. Right. The items all have uh, placeholders for GL accounts. Okay, so we have like cost of sales, uh, inventory, as well as uh, what's the third ones? Cost of sales, inventory, and cut. There's there's three GL accounts that you have available on each individual item ID. So you can charge them to different cost centers. Uh, we do have cost centers in the system as well. I don't know if we show them in the demo or not. Uh, system. Center codes available for you to use. OK, so let me uh, let Zach show you the Sage interface, and we can pick up the discussion mm -hmm. after that. So yeah, are you, you uh, making the presenter or? Yeah. Did I get you or did I get Ben? Uh, you got me. OK. OK, so let me know when you can see the screen. Yep. Where are you? What state might you be in? Because you need to come to Virginia. <laughs> This is nothing like we're used to. Yeah, this is so different. We're kind of lost here. So. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, let me just go over the uh, the interface here uh, real quick. Um, so I have uh, Sage open here. I can find the main window. Okay, so this is a testing system we have. Um, so we just have some default uh, from our uh, demo site, um, different customers in here as well as different vendors and some basic orders. Uh, so essentially what this does is we have the interface here, uh, which will actually listen and it will check constantly on the uh, testing system to see if there's any transactions that have been made. So you can see here we have it, um, you know, right now it's processing. It's looking for any new parts you've created, any new vendors you've created, or any new customers. And it will copy those over into the Sage system. Um, alternatively, if you've created any orders, it will generate those as well. Um, so you can see here, it actually logs every transaction it makes. Um, and you can see here, as we scroll down, it, it, you know, it's done a lot of transactions over, over time here. But uh, essentially, you can see it, it inserted a purchase, it inserted a sales order here. Uh, you know, it inserted some purchase orders. <clears throat> and if we go over into Sage, um, actually pop into the sales order side, uh, we can actually look and it actually pulls in the sales orders. You'll notice there's a gap in the sales order. So we have sales order one, two, three, and then we're missing four. Uh, the system waits until you've actually prepared the order in order to uh, post it. So if I open up the shipping orders area, <clears throat> uh, you can see that shipping order number four it has not been prepared. So we have it in there. We have it set up uh, as the header information, but we never added any items to it and there's no total available. So uh, once you actually fill out the order and process the order, it will start to process um, and it will go over and start posting against your accounts. Um, the you know final postings against the accounts won't occur until you actually issue the stock out of the system and it's been consumed. So you can create the order and generate the order, um, but the you know the final account posting and the final you know um, increments will not occur until you've actually uh, issued the order out of the system and uh, consume the stock. Uh, any questions about how this works? It's pretty straightforward, just a copy and paste from one system into the other. And then it interfaces everything into the GL. Yes, so uh, if I can remember how Sage works, it's been a couple weeks since I opened it up. <laughs> Okay, general ledger. Oh, that's the current period. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, 
Okay, I'm not looking in the right place. <laughs> uh, but yes, it will it will make the post against here. Let me check its accounts uh, accounts receivable here. It's also possible I haven't completed any orders in this test site. So you're saying we would have to like buy a separate thing for the interface? Right. It's well, we do sell the interface separately, yeah. That would be an additional cost. Yes. Yeah, but I quoted you a, a bundled cost, Cynthia. You know, the estimate I gave you, that included the interface. Oh, okay. You can see here we have a couple accounts uh, that posted against here. We have a, you know, two transactions here for Acme Chevron and Acme Manville uh, customers, and it shows you the gross profit, the gross margin, and such. Uh, and like I said, every time you complete an order, it will post against here. Uh, it looks like we only completed two of the orders uh, in this system and out of the five total. <clears throat> and we also uh, have the purchase orders. So as you're purchasing goods or materials, uh, those come into the system as well. And you can track the uh, you know purchases versus the different vendors and the amounts and such. Um, it doesn't look like I've completed any of these, however. So uh, you know the, we'd have to complete a transaction here in order to uh, have that show up. <clears throat> and again, it will also copy the parts list over. So you can see here, this is the entire parts list for our demo system. Um, so as you do any process in Inventory Pro, it will uh, essentially monitor that activity and uh, copy that over to this uh, testing system. Uh, into into the Sage system. <clears throat> any questions about how any of this works, or anything we can try to clarify for you? Um. <laughs> I don't think they, I, I don't think they even know Sage yet, so it's a little difficult for them. Yeah, well, that's yeah, true. You completely lost me. It's so different, and like you said, we don't know Sage yet, so it's kind of we're we're sitting here kind of dumbfounded, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Well, to be honest, I don't know. I don't know much of Sage either. I just uh, I know enough to see if it's working. Be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I don't know. I don't even know where to start. The the pages that they send me up from the shop. I mean, it's it may be fifty parts. Fifty parts on that sheet going to thirty different locations. From vans to stores to, to stores. I mean, from from central to vans, from vans to stores. We have to pick each one every time. We can't just punch and go down the sheet. Well, it depends we on how change? you're doing it. Are you consuming the stock when you? Uh, yeah, I'll change it back over to Benson. Are you consuming the stock and you're not tracking it anymore once you uh, once you're sending it to all these locations, or are you yeah. still tracking that stock? We track it from the central to the vans, but mm -hmm. once once we take it off of the vans and put it to the store, it it's is. done. Mm. Right now, I, the way our system works is we go to, let's say, a screen, and she can just put in the part number and the total, and then it just pops up for her to put in the next one and the next one and the next one, and then when she finishes, she clicks the button that says post. And it puts it wherever it's supposed to go. I wonder if we could change the quick order screen to give it. Uh, We're you know, just thinking we have to get to all the places. I mean, if you it, if you're basically issuing out the stock and it goes into the van and you don't care about it once it's in the van, we could probably modify the issue grid so they can choose you know, the location in a drop-down box and just populate an issue grid and just get rid of the stock. Well, we care about but, it when it's in the van. We don't care about it once we charge it to the store. Right. Okay, so you want to see it in the van. Right. And then when they go to the store and they take it off of the van, she puts into the system that it went off of van two and into such and such store and then that amount of that part is charged to that store, the cost of it. Yeah, we're going to have to make a change to the issue routine in order to capture that information. 
unless it was all done with the orders. Okay, well, let me play with it a little bit. Yeah, let us brainstorm the scenario you described. We can, I'm sure we can come up with a, a solution I mean, for you that's going to do it. To send you a sheet showing. Yeah, that will help. Any, anything that you have that kind of, you know, is visual on the process that you guys follow is going to help. Okay. Okay, because, you, you know, not only are you trying to understand what we're showing you, we're trying to understand what you're trying to get to. So. Right. Yeah. That's why I said y'all come on up here and pay a visit to Virginia. <laughs> and we can show you what we do, and you can show us what we need to do. Well, we can always turn the screen around on you, and you can show us exactly what you do. I mean, you know, we can make you the presenter, and you can show us your systems and what you're doing. Oh. Okay. Well, that you want to do that now, or do you want to set up another That's meeting to do it? That's up to Cindy, but I mean that. I mean, yeah, that would show you kind of what we're doing. Yeah. That's right. Fine. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that. You want to do You're it now? You want to do it later, or you can but do. Now we can go ahead and kind of show you what we have. I think you're going to have to re. Oh, yeah, I think you're going to have to reload. Uh, go to meeting to. Uh, it may. It's going to prompt you to like re, re-download. Go to meeting quick, which shouldn't take too long. Well, I'm just gonna. We're gonna make. Uh, yeah, I made Wendy the presenter already. Oh, you made her the presenter. Okay. Can you show your screen, Wendy, or what's it saying on your screen? Um, just downloading something. Share your. Oh, there you go. There. You, yeah. There you go. Okay. Now, Wendy, you can. Oh, you can see my screen. Yes, we can. Yep. <laughs> okay, hold on. Together, children. <laughs> All right. When I want to punch one of the stock reduction sheets. I can enter right here, and it's like an, I only use adjustments and transfers. So if I want to transfer that part that we talked about earlier, I can transfer it from the central warehouse to van 74. And then I put quantity I want to transfer. The price already comes up. I put stock reduction in. It puts the account number at the bottom. And I hit enter, and I go to my next one. So then I can hit transfer it from central to van 55. I can do two, and then I go to the next one. Okay, so that as far as the transfer it from the central to the van, the adjustment when the maintenance men give me the maintenance sheet, I do adjustment. So now I'm on the adjustment part of it. I can take the part that they issued from van 55, I'm going to subtract one off of that van, and the cost automatically comes in. Right here at this GO account, I would put the store number and our washer code. And then it charges it to the washer, and then I'm done. And then, and then, yeah, I can go out, and then I post it right here, and it posts everything to the GL that I just punched. Hello? No, you're speechless. <laughs> no, no, no. I was just thinking we could probably <laughs> modify it. We can pr we we have reason codes similar to what you you have there. The the GL accounts are manually entered, or are they pulled in based upon a reason code? We've got them set up according to whatever account you know. Like if we have lots, lots of GL, GL accounts. There, yeah. Right. So how how are they assigned? They're assigned by washer, dryer. Oh, um, so they're based upon the item ID. Yes. 
Oh, okay, so we have that. Okay, so what, what I'm thinking we can do is we can modify our issue grid basically to accept different transactions, whether they're transfer or adjustments. Because basically that's what it is, right? You're either going to have an adjustment or transfer. Right, right. And that's right. what I was saying when you said I had to go type that part in and then click over here and transfer it over here and do this to each individual part. That's just so time consuming from what I'm used to doing now where I can just punch and keep on getting it. Right, I understand, but you know that's the way the system works today. That doesn't mean it has to work that way tomorrow because what we right. do is we do customize our software for folks. So what I'm thinking, Zach, what do you think? I think that would work, right? We just modify the issue module so it accepts adjustments or transits. I mean, that's pretty much what we were talking about the other week with the, uh, with the bulk move transactions as well, right? Right, right, right. So, you know, I think it's going to be... So we have a stock number, which is our item ID, the location you're pulling it from, transfer to location. We always have to have the GL account number for her put in, too. Well, the GL account number is tied to the, the item, to the SKU, correct? That, that's the account number that we want it charged to when it does the transfer or adjustment. Right, right. And see, like when I'm receiving something, I go right here to purchase and receiving, process inventory receiving, and then I can enter the purchase order, which I don't have one on hand right at the moment. Um, yeah, this is where I'm receiving it from from the whoever we get it from into the shop, into the parts department. Yeah, I don't think that's going to, our, you know, our receiving process is very similar. Basically, you set up a purchase order. When the, when the parts come in, the purchase order populates the receiving grid with all the items on the purchase order. And you can adjust the quantities at that time if it's a partial receipt, all of that, and just receive them into inventory. I think the, the big change is going to be on the uh, issue side where we can, you know, allow you to use the issue grid for in transits as well as, you know, uh, adjustments. And that's basically a little magic behind the scenes, I think. And we can work with you to make that sure that's, you know, set up the correct way. Oh, okay. And it's working cool. for you, you know. I don't think it's going to be that big a deal, to be honest with you. There's some coding changes for sure, but... You know, most of them are contained in the library. Okay. And we allow custom code in the library, so it's just making sure that it's working properly and the right tables get updated behind the scenes because our, they are two different processes in our system. That's why there's two different ways to do it. Well, let us send you um, copies of the reports that she does from, and we'll kind of send you little notes of how she does it. Now you've seen the screen of how she does it, and yep. maybe that will help you out. So. Okay. Sound good? Yep. Any other questions, ladies? One, one thing at a time. That's the main thing. <laughs> that was the main yeah. thing is, you know, the the like mm -hmm. getting them from the warehouse to the vans and the vans to the stores. Yeah, and then he's going to set it up like if they buy, if they transfer stuff from van 2 to van 7, all you got to do is change the warehouse you name to band punch. seven. You will have to repunch all that stuff like you do now. Gotcha. Right? Uh, let, let's make a pass at it first based upon the meeting today, <laughs> and then if we have to tweak it again, we'll tweak it again. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to get the two different adjustments in there, so you can either do a transit or an adjustment. Okay. 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 <laughs> We're making progress. <laughs> Yeah, and we'll I, be able to do it. I don't, you know, it's not, it's not that big a stretch. And all these parts, it's, it's, it's kind of a strange yeah, setup. We have a weird business. So. <laughs> do you have any other? Actually, questions? I think what you're asking for is a good enhancement. To be honest with you, whether you, you could do that, so we'll just create another grid view, and then uh, pull from different tables. Okay. Okay. Right, let me do this. If I'm punching, see this this system that we're on now, 
if I'm punching a maintenance sheet from the van, just to say, and or even well, let's back up. Let's say we're doing it from the shop. Um, <laughs> if the shop has no quantity, it will still let me punch it. And then when I do a item stop for the shop, it will show a negative number. Now, will this new system not let me punch it if it's nothing in the shop to take it from? Or will it? Yeah, it? yeah it, prevents, it, it prevents you from going negative. But if we're customizing it anyways, we can make a change. Yeah, we, I don't want to be able to order. I want it to pop up and say there's none in the shop yeah. for you to take out. Oh, that's fine, and that's how it works right now. So, <laughs> yeah, okay, because that's a whole lot better. It's kind of—I mean, this system lets you do it whether you have it or not. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of things up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll go back and discuss it among ourselves. You know, we see what you need, and we'll come up with a, a process, hopefully that you know matches what you need it to do, and then uh, doesn't create too much work on our end to make it work. All right. Let us know then. We'll send you those papers and stuff that we do. Great. Sounds good. Okay, we good? I think so. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.